where can you find one of the best water views in Europe? From the bridges and canals of Amsterdam, you're going to love it. Welcome to Laura McKenzie's Traveler. Hi, I'm Laura McKenzie, and welcome to Amsterdam, one of the most picturesque cities I've ever been to. The canals and the bridges are just two of Amsterdam's trademarks. I'm going to show you a lot more of what Holland has to offer, too. You want windmills and tulips and wooden shoes? You'll see it. So if you're ready, let's see Amsterdam. Amsterdam is the largest city in Holland, a country famous for its windmills. Also known as the Netherlands, the Dutch countryside is absolutely beautiful, in or out of tulip season. And you gotta love those windmills. Okay, here's a trivia question for you. Windmills operate A to grind grain, B to pump water, or C to saw wood. Okay, time's up. Well, that was really a trick question, because the answer is D, all of the above, although I prefer option E, they're here so the tourists can take pictures. You'll also see boats and bikes, Dutch boys and bridges, and much, much more. Oh yeah, that's Holland. It's a curious place full of wonderful things, and you gotta see it to believe it. Amsterdam is, in a word, mind-blowing. Well, that's two words, I guess, but that just proves my point. There's 7,000 canal homes and buildings dating back to as early as the 16th century, over 1,200 bridges, 165 canals, and thousands of bicycles. It's a city of extremes. Liberal and open-minded, Amsterdam is also graceful and gracious. From the freewheeling red light district and the pot-smoking coffee shops to its memorable art museums and the memory-filled Anne Frank House, there is truly something for everyone here. Okay, this is the center of Amsterdam. This is Dam Square, named for the dam built in the Amstel River back in the 13th century. Remember Amsterdam? Well, behind me is the Royal Palace. The Queen doesn't live there anymore. She lives in The Hague. The church over there is used for concerts and special events, but they did have a royal wedding there in 2002. Crown Prince William Alexander married the Argentinian girl Maxima. They now have a little girl named Amelia, so the dynasty continues. No longer the hippie haven it was in the 70s, Amsterdam today is a thriving, multicultural, world-class city that has earned the title Europe's most vibrant city. But don't take my word for it, see for yourself. that Amsterdam has more bridges and canals than Venice? Uh-huh. In fact, they call Venice the Amsterdam of Italy. There you go. Well, one of the most famous bridges is this little bridge called the Skinny Bridge. It's a footbridge, obviously a bike and a moped bridge, too. It's a drawbridge built in the 1600s by two wealthy sisters. They lived on each side of the canal. They wanted to visit each other, so they built themselves a footbridge. I love these stories. Amsterdam is fairly compact and almost everything in the city is within walking distance. But watch out for the locals on their bikes. They pretty much have the right of way. Like a living, breathing Ripley's Believe It or Not, everywhere you turn in Amsterdam, there's something curious to catch your eye. Look what I found, the Dutch Cannabis Seed Starter Kit. Look at that black house over there. Is it me or is it crooked? Look at daddy tulip, a mommy tulip, and a baby tulip. <laughs> well, if you've ever wondered what happens to old bicycles when you're finished with them, you throw them in the canal. No, really. Every once in a while, salvagers come through with big mechanical claws on a barge and fish out the old discarded bikes from the water to make room for the new discarded bikes. And speaking of fish, feast your eyes on this Dutch treat. Hang on one second, I got a little hungry, so Eric brought me to the stand and says he's gonna get me something typically Dutch. 
What do you, what do we have? A Dutch herring. Oh. Is this a joke? No. This is a Dutch uh, delicacy. It is. And this is the way you eat it. Oh, you're not. Yes. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh. Mmm. Oh, that is gross. I can't believe you did that. Is that raw? It's slightly salted. Oh. Oh, I don't even like sushi. Oh. Here's a tip. Pack a photocopy of your passport and driver's license in case yours is lost or stolen. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. Volendam is a short 35-minute drive north of Amsterdam, but it feels like you're taking a long trip back in time. Its boat-filled harbor and charming traditional houses are irresistible. So are the friendly residents who go about their daily lives wearing traditional Dutch clothing. The whole seaside town is custom made for a great photo op. This is exactly what you expect to see when you come to Holland. Wooden shoes, Dutch caps and all. It's touristy, yeah, but you'll go home with the photos you expect to get. Now the tour buses get here about 10 a.m. So if you show up at 8.30 or 9 in the morning, you'll be golden. While fishing is no longer the mainstay of Volendam, its harbor is still filled with colorful and quaint boats that make for a great photo themselves. Everywhere you look, there's something pretty to take a picture of. It's almost as if the Dutch masters arranged the boats themselves. Great composition, huh? Today, tourism is the number one industry in Volendam, and there's plenty of souvenir shops to prove it. One of the most popular tourist attractions here is a unique experience and souvenir all in one. And who could resist the opportunity to dress up in traditional Dutch clothes for an old time photo shoot? You'll want to get your picture taken in the traditional costume, so that's what we're here for. We're going to get dressed. You have a skirt for me? Oh, that is a good look for you. <laughs> The outfits are very detailed, right down to the wooden shoes. Yeah, now for the shoes. They have wooden shoes in all shapes and sizes. Pick a shoe, any shoe. Okay, so these get-ups aren't my best look either, but it's still a lot of fun. You can pick the set you want to have your photo taken with. We have a kitchen set here, usually for the ladies. Uh -huh. Ships over there for men, little houses. We just need a few props to look authentic. Ah, tulips, perfect. Look here, one, two, three. Thank you. Great souvenir. When the main street gets a little bit too touristy and crowded for you, head back into what they call the labyrinth. These are the tiny little narrow streets behind the harbor with the little houses and flowers and cobbled streets and bridges over the canals. It's really pretty. Then take a walk and try and get just a little bit lost. The Dutch do something which I think is kind of special. They leave their living room curtains open. Now this isn't for peeping toms, but it's so people can look in and appreciate the beauty of their homes and so that they can look out and appreciate the world going by. These houses along the water are charming. I'm not sure who has the better view, them or me. It's a great way to spend a lazy afternoon. Another must-do day trip is the village of Adam. It's very close to Volendam and has scenic canals and charming 17th century buildings. But what it's really famous for is the cheese. Well, I can't leave Adam without taking home a souvenir of cheese. But if 30 pounds is a little too heavy for your luggage, they do ship. Mmm, I love cheese. And when I see mass quantities of it, my brain turns into cheese, and I can't tell them apart. What's the difference in the different colors of the Adam cheese? I have here one, the natural. We have the paprika, nuts, pepper, garlic and herbs. Ooh, and that one. seeds. And we have goat cheese and cheese cheese. I can't decide. <laughs> so many. Oh, look what I found. <laughs> now I can have all my cheeses. Thank you. OK, so Holland is full of cheese. But where do they make it? And how do they make it? 
I decided to go to the source. Just south of Amsterdam is Rembrandt Farm, a working farm open year-round for tours and demonstrations. Here, they not only show you how to cut the cheese, they show you how they make it as well. Now, this is a very small farm. We only have 25 cows, and we use 24 for milking. We collect all the milk in a container like this. Then we heat it up to 29 degrees Celsius. And when it's at that temperature, we add two things. The first is rennet, which makes the milk thick like a yogurt. And the second is the Gouda bacteria, which gives the milk its taste. Our cheese can be taken back to any country in the world except Australia and New Zealand. So for America, it's fine. The only thing is, it needs to be still sealed in the wax. Cheese isn't the only thing Rembrandt Farm makes. Here, the shoes literally grow on trees. The wood we use to make the wooden shoes is poplar tree. And we just take our wood, place it in here, make sure it's all locked in, and then we can start it. Perfect. Now this machine was very easy. I just put the wood in, pull a lever, press a switch, and it cuts the outside of the shoe. This second machine takes a lot more skill, but we just take the outside cut of the shoe, place it in here, and this machine cuts the inside. That takes three minutes just to make one shoe by both machines. Yellow is the working shoe used by farmers and builders. Red is a dancing shoe, and white is traditionally a Sunday shoe. And then we have the most special shoe. This is a hand-carved shoe, which we normally only have once in our life, and that's because it's a wedding shoe. This is hand-carved by the groom for the bride on the morning of the wedding. The blank shoes sell the most in the Netherlands because they're the cheapest and you can paint them yourself. Whatever color you buy, make sure you get them a little bit big. They're meant to be worn with heavy socks. If you get your thumb or finger in the back, it's the perfect size. That way, they slip on and off easily, and they walk just like a slipper. While I think you can never have enough shoes, shoes alone do not a shopping spree make. Here's a tip. Pack a collapsible duffel in case your bag is overweight at the airline counter. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. I've always wanted to see the Dutch masters. How can you come to Amsterdam and not go to the museum? One thing I learned, Rembrandt, yes, Van Gogh, you don't say Van Gogh, you say Van Gogh, Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh. We're gonna see Vincent Van Gogh and Rembrandt at the mirror. Wow. The Rijksmuseum is considered to be one of the greatest art museums in the world and features the largest collection of Dutch masters. There's masterworks by Jan Steen, Vermeer, Jan Levens, and of course, lots of Rembrandt. Rembrandt's Night Watch is not only the most famous painting on display here, it's the largest as well. It's magnificent and a must see in Amsterdam. Getting back to Van Gogh, his legend and body of work are so large that he has an entire museum devoted to his masterpieces. Remember some of these from Art Appreciation Class? My favorites are the Flower Series. Dazzling. If you're dazzled by Amsterdam in the day, just wait until the sun goes down. Amsterdam After Dark is decidedly different and decadent. Some find it delightful, some find it dubious, but there's one thing for sure, Amsterdam at night is definitely not dull. If you're brave, you can visit one of Amsterdam's infamous coffee houses where marijuana smoking is not only tolerated, it's on the menu. For the more demure side of Amsterdam, head to the canals where all of the bridges are lit up like Christmas trees. It's enchanting and romantic, but your kids will think it's pretty cool, too. Mm -hmm. 
One of the most beautiful illuminated buildings along the canals is also one of the best hotels in Europe with an interesting and artistic approach to the hotel business. Welcome to the Hotel de la Rope. Their motto is, art begins where the potential of most people ends. That's why we like to turn hospitality into an art. This philosophy continues to earn the hotel rave reviews and I decided to see what all the fuss was about. Perhaps one of the reasons the Hotel de la Rope stays on top is that their managing director has been with the hotel for 24 years, putting his personal stamp on the place. Tell me a little bit about the history of this hotel. It was actually built in the, in, I think in 1896. And it was uh, built on a very old castle actually. The fundaments are still is, is the old castle, which was built in, in medi medieval times, in the, I think the 1400s uh, or something like that. Tell me exactly where we are here in Amsterdam. Well, how's our location? Well, the location is, uh, I think you can't find a better location than this. It's right in the middle of the city. It's at the, at the Amstel River. Everything actually in the city is in walking distance. It's a rather small city. When we talk about the city, but actually it's a global village, as we call it. You've got everything in the neighborhood here. You don't even need a car because whatever you go to the theater or to the markets or everything is in walking distance. I noticed that you have a boat dock down there, so if you didn't want to walk, you could go by water. We've got many boats to rent actually, from two persons to about uh, 30 or 40 if you like. But if you like to go for a short distance, you rent uh, one of the taxis or go for an hour, whether it was shorter, or just to bring you from A to B. That's also very good possible. Now this is service. Come on board. One of the best ways to see any city is from the water, and Amsterdam is no different. Now this is the way to go. Since most of the canals connect to each other, you can pretty much go anywhere you want to go by boat, even places you didn't know you wanted to see until after you've seen them. This is one way to see the red light district if you don't want to take a walk. We cruise right through it. Even if you have nowhere to go, it's fun just to relax and enjoy the ride. What a great service. The amenities and special touches here are fantastic, but I want a room that's super comfortable. And the rooms here are a work of art. Every little detail is artfully mastered, from the flowers in the room to the architectural embellishments on the ceiling. It's like sleeping in a masterpiece. Okay, the rooms are great, but even if you don't check into the Hotel de la Rope, you have to check out the restaurants. The Restaurant Excelsior, the Brasserie Le Relais, and La Terrasse. Superb. I love being out here on the terrace. It's right on the canal, so you can watch the boats go by. You see the people going over the bridge. You know, there's a vibrancy here in Amsterdam, and being on the water, here's where you can really feel it. It's nice. It's easy for me to tell you how great Amsterdam is, but I asked Mr. Grandia what he would recommend seeing. Well, we have a lot of culture, of course, in this city, and one of the main attractions is, of course, the Rijksmuseum. But to see the city also in a very good and short time is making a boat trip through all canals. And seeing it from the water is it's, it's beautiful, then seeing it from the car, and people coming especially from all, for all the gardens we have, and especially the flower gardens you know, around Amsterdam. We've got plenty of them. Museums, gardens, live and let live lifestyle, Whatever draws you to visit Amsterdam, it's the singular charm of this wonderful city and its people that will entice you to come back again and again. Here's a tip. Know that overseas airlines usually have lower weight and baggage allowances. Laura McKenzie's Traveler will be right back. this pretty? You know, I think bikes and boats are the two things I'm going to remember about Amsterdam. I hope you enjoyed seeing it with me and that you'll join me again next time from another terrific destination somewhere else around the world. I'm Laura McKenzie. Bye-bye.